Hi guys, the time has finally come. We are doing some palette bingo with my once palette for my weekly dose of the Emily edit. Thank you guys so much for joining me. So obviously I have nothing on my eyes yet because I'm gonna be doing the random number generator. And I want you to see all that happen. And by the way, big thanks to my friend David who got the ball rolling on palette bingo years back on my channel. I think it was years ago. He first inspired me to do that with big palettes that you kind of, I don't know, get bored with, forget about. And so it's extra fun when you use a palette that you're not bored with and you have haven't forgotten about. But before I get into that, I want to just talk for a minute about just something that's been weighing on me the last couple days, and it is the need to be gentle with one another. I posted this tweet last night, and it's a quote from Gary Zukov, and he says, practice moderation in all things except love. And I think we need to keep in mind what our duty is on this planet, especially when we run across those who we may not agree with on something. The internet comment sections give us the ability to just snap in an instant and feel how we feel and immediately share those feelings with the masses. And I really think we need to stop ourselves and ask ourselves, is this helpful or could this actually be hurtful to someone? And I'm not gonna throw out any names here because I don't want to be seen as someone who's directing more drama to anyone. But if you happen to love my palettes and you see someone else who doesn't, you are under no obligation to defend me. I feel like my core people know this and it, there are plenty of ways to respectfully share our opinions, right? Um, I always think about if I'm in an argument, I try to remind myself of this. It's not more important to be right it's just important to be understood. And I think there are plenty of ways to make ourselves understood to others without breaking them down, attacking them personally. And I think if you have an angry feeling as you're typing something out or texting something out on your phone, if you're feeling anger as you do that, take that as your sign that maybe you should put it down. And if this issue is important enough to you, you'll revisit it at a time when you've cooled off a little bit. I am so against bullying and I know the core of my people who are watching this video are as well. You share my thoughts on that. But we need to be sensitive to one another and realize that everyone's a human being here and everybody deserves love no matter what. Treating others how you want to be treated applies to the internet too. And I'm not saying we all have to agree on everything. We won't and we don't but we should be treating each other with compassion at every opportunity. What's specifically bringing up these issues now are my palettes, of course, but this goes for everything. Do we not encounter this maybe even on a daily basis with various topics on the internet? Every chance you get, be gentle with your words. And um, I love you guys so much. And I could not be more grateful for the support you show me for anything from the palettes to hitting a million subscribers to just the day-to-day -day comments section of my videos. You are wonderful. I appreciate you guys so much and I just want you to know that if you feel tempted to go mama bear on anybody on my account just know it's okay it'll all be okay love you guys let's get into it let's have some coffee a little coffee, a little eyeshadow primer to kick off the day. This is my Urban Decay Anti-Aging Primer Potion. I feel like it's got a couple weeks left in the tube here. This is just a mini. I've been using it for ages. I use very little eyeshadow primer. Very thin layer. But I've been looking forward to doing some palette bingo with this for so long. And then last night I was thinking, how did I do palette bingo before? And David was like, well, just number off your shadows and then do the random number generator tool. And so I have a little number. I wrote it on my palette in a liquid liner pen, which that can easily be wiped off, but I'll probably leave it there for the future. Now, I want to show you what happens if you Google random number generator. It will default to 1 to 10, so you just set that to however big your palette is. So this is a 24 color palette, so I'll put in 24, and then I'll put generate, and this is going to be our first number. So generate... 11. First number is 11. That is Capricorn. And we're going to do five for B-I-N-G-O, right? Okay, so generate another. We have eight. Eight is deuce paid. All right. Our third color is 14. 14 is love tons. Two more to go. Let's generate another. We've got 21. That is cheer. Oh man, we've got love tons and cheer in the same look. Okie dokie. And the last one is 20, which is laugh cry. Dang, we got some warm statement shades in this look. Alrighty friends, so take a look. The underlined shades are the ones I have to use. So deuce paid, 
Capricorn, love tons, laugh, cry, and cheer. Here goes nothing. I've taken a couple minutes to formulate my plan. If you really want to get cutthroat with yourself, you could get one of those little like hourglasses from a board game and be like, okay, now it's time to plan your look. But here's what I'm going to start out with. I'm going to do dues paid in my crease with my usual setting up the crease brush, my E25 here. Again, I already primed the lids as you saw. So look how quickly that shade works in there. Love it. This is my little terracotta friend. And I find myself going into Deuce Paid quite a bit. Sometimes just as a little like warm it up accent after the fact, after I've done a look. Or as you can see here, getting right into the crease. It's a nice little warm brown mid-tone. So I've got some really bold mattes to work with in this look. And I think what I'm gonna try is like use my lid space and fade one into the next. Sound like fun? But then I've also got Capricorn to work with which is shimmery, but kind of deep. So if I end up wanting a little extra contrast, I can use that there, or I could like use it as a liner. The rule with this is just that you have to work in every shade in some form or fashion. Now I'm just gonna take a bare brush, buff over the outside of that. Next up, I'm gonna use Laugh Cry, and I'm using my flat brush. This is my E60. And this is going to go on the inner third of my eyelid. I must say, I don't think I've put this color in this particular spot before. Um, but this is our little pop of orangey coral in this palette. And you know what's interesting, guys? Like, I don't typically think of Love Tons as a real, like, fall color. But some of the most beautiful trees where I live do start to turn this sort of, like, pinkish fuchsia kind of shade and that is definitely something that stands out to me in the fall. This is gonna be like a fall on fire kind of look. All right so there's our laugh cry. Then I'm gonna go into love tons next and that's gonna live right here in the center of the lid. And these are just matte shadows. I haven't worked with a shimmer yet but they apply really great on the lid with just a little patting motion. And yeah, I am kind of overlapping that orange. I want it to look sort of seamless. I don't want like chunk, chunk, chunk of color here. And now on the outside, we're gonna go into Cheer. Just pat that on the outer corner. I'm kind of running out of room. <laughs> I used a lot of space with uh, Love Tons. And I'm sort of incorporating that into my crease just a little bit also, like just turning my brush and wedging it just slightly. These three shades just really seamlessly go one into the next. So that was kind of an easy integration of those three. Then I'm gonna use my crease brush again, the one that I applied Deuce Paid with. And I'm just gonna work over that outer corner where I got a little bit of cheer on there and just hopefully let those blend a bit more. And it might even be neat to take a little laugh cry with the small brush and let that really kick things up you know, as a transition-y sort of shade up here around the outside. Now I want my Love Tons to pop out a little more right here in the center of the lid, so I'm just gonna overlap that gently here. Oh, but I haven't forgotten about Capricorn over here, so I'm gonna pick that up with my E21, and I'm going to get a little smudging action going down in here. I kind of wish this forced me to bounce more randomly around the entire palette, but yet this isn't a combo I've put together before, so there's that. Um, then I'm going to take a little Love Tons here and sort of blend that over Capricorn, and maybe it'll... I don't know what it's going to do to Capricorn, but gosh, it's making it almost look like just a dark berry there on the lower lash line, actually. But according to my rules of palette bingo, you can layer things up, use shadows multiple ways, however it works for you, just so long as you get all of them on your eyes. Now, what if we just took a little Capricorn? I just want to see how deep this shade can really go, topping off some of these shades, and give ourselves like kind of a a little bit of a outer V thing here. I don't know when to quit, that's the problem. Yeah, it can totally work in your in your crease outer corner. It actually blended in really easily, it took the look in a little bit richer direction, and sort of makes my lower lash line make a little more sense now that I've put this here. And if you wanted to stay all matte, you could just use apartment in this 
manner. It just never ceases to amaze me how brilliant these colors are though. Blend around the outside of that a little bit. Doesn't require a whole lot. Remember we already had like Laugh Cry and Deuce Paid and all that happening there. And speaking of Laugh Cry, let's make sure none of that got lost here as we overlapped. Sometimes you can overlap to the point of disappearance. So get a little more of our orange through here. I'm gonna finish out this look with some eyeliner, mascara, choose a lip product, and I'll show you how it all ended up. All right, everyone, here we are for the finished look. I put black liquid liner across the upper lash line. I did a dark brown in my lower inner rim, which is kind of making this look extra smoky. I put on my Salon Perfect Silk Noir lashes. It's the 652 style, and they're just very kind of fanned out and fluttery looking. On my cheeks, I've got on the Too Faced Sugar Peach palette. I'm actually wearing every color in this today on my skin. And for the lips, I used the Balm Jour Creamy Lip Stain. This was one of the things that didn't win out in my little pick my makeup poll, but a lot of you were still really interested in it. And it's actually like I don't know, it feels sort of like a lip gloss, lip lacquer type thing, and we'll see how it wears. I have more of a berry color of this, and I felt like once the shine wore off, I still kind of had color left behind, so I guess that's the staining element, but I'm going to really try to keep an eye on staying power here. This color is Konichiwa, so that's what I'm wearing on my lips. But thank you guys so much for joining me for this palette bingo. It's always fun to see how a random assortment of shades comes together, and the needs and the wants are not limited edition products. The wants will be back in Ulta soon. You'll see it back in stock on Ulta's website about a week, week and a half. Revolution's websites as well, and then after that it will start to appear both of the palettes as part of the permanent in-store display. I will keep you posted on social media with more specific dates as I get them, but thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you've done palette bingo. I've seen a few of you guys doing it, and it's really, really fun to see. I hope you all have a great day, and I will see you again soon. Bye!